uh, implantable human chips. Supporters hail the technology as a medical marvel, but critics warn that the potential risks are real. One such detractor is Catherine Albrecht. She's author of Spy Chips. Yesterday on Squawk Box, she blasted the device maker Verichip, citing FDA comments. Well, they talked about, for example, electrical hazards. This thing is by no means inert. The, w the way it works is it actually picks up and amplifies ambient electromagnetic energy from the reader devices. And if you have one of these things in your arm and you get within range of a, a powerful electromagnetic field, it can actually burn you. Joining us now to make his case is Scott Silverman. He's chairman and CEO of Applied Digital Solutions. That's the parent company of Verichip. And, and Mr. Sullivan, Silverman, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. We're looking at this little chip right here. You brought some in with us, tiny little things. But what we heard yesterday was kind of scary. How do, you, how do you react to that? Well, Becky, thanks for having us back on the air. We appreciate that very much. And obviously the comments that were made yesterday is the reason that I'm sitting here today. As right. you know, Verichip has been approved by the FDA as a class two medical device in order to identify high risk patients in an emergency situation. It's elective, it's voluntary, and it is certainly critical to the evolution of information technology in healthcare, which we all know is archaic, the way healthcare is done today in emergency rooms and physicians' offices. So we look to be a small part of that. And we wanted to correct inaccurate statements that were made yesterday, and more importantly, talk about the Verichip technology. What, what's inaccurate? In what well, was there were yesterday? two things that were discussed yesterday on the air. The first was passing through a smart pass on the highway and having a Verichip in your arm and being able to be read by the technology. Mm -hmm. This is not a location device. This is a passive device that cannot be read in that atmosphere, in the smart pass atmosphere. The second thing is MRI compatibility. When any new medical device is approved by the FDA, obviously they're going to list, cer list certain risk factors. That was one of the risk factors they listed. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we commissioned the University of Minnesota to do a study which has been submitted to the FDA that declares Verichip to be MRI compatible. It, you, it, oh, go ahead. You have one in your arm right now. That's correct. Where, where is it? It's in the upper right arm. It's a simple injection process, just like getting a shot of penicillin. Is it painful? Not at all. They numb the area slightly. You don't feel it. They put a Band-Aid on it. Within two days, you don't even know it's there. And can we, I don't know, uh, did you get a good shot of this, Peter, this, uh, the chip? I don't know how tight you can get on it, but these are, these are small, and you've got a scanner with you That's right correct. now. That's right? correct. This is the passive scanner that awakens our proprietary chip. It is not an active RFID tag that they have in retail environments where the technology is used for the benefit of the retailer. This is used for the benefit of a patient, a high-risk patient, being brought into an emergency okay, room. Okay, that's what you plan to use it for, but is there a way that it could ever be twisted or turned or somebody else could get aware? It's not the chip itself that turns it on, it's the, the reader. That's correct? right. The chip itself, Becky, as you know, has a unique 16-digit identifier. Mm -hmm. Even if I have one of these readers, even if I'm a bad guy that has right. one of these readers, and I scan your arm, all I'm going to get is a 16-digit identification number. The relevant information is stored on a database and you as the patient control the access to that database. So all you see you getting here is a 16-digit identifier, and the database information is really where the medical records are stored, and you as the patient have control over that database. You allow what group of affiliates, such as emergency rooms, do you want to have access to that database. So control is at the root of privacy. We have a very large privacy policy. I dare to say that we're leaders in the RFID industry when it comes to that. And that's why the remarks yesterday bothered us and but why I wanted to they, be here today. You know, the critics would say, and I listen to and I, I'm trying to figure it out, but they use the they word a lot. Is there a vast RFID conspiracy out there that is plot? They, they would say this is a slippery slope. This is the first thing. This is where you lull us into a false sense of security. Yeah. We all get these things. And then the next thing, you know, I don't know. It's making like the, soil and green. Like the, yeah, the, the, the trilateral commission or the whole world gets taken over like in Terminator yeah. 3 or something. Is anything, I mean, do we need to worry? There, there's no conspiracy, Joe. You sure? I'm, I'm sure. At, I'm looking at you. <laughs> I, I'm looking I saw at, your eyebrow. At, at, it it yeah. twitches when you say that a little bit. And I'm looking your back face at you. Come off? And, 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 <laughs> let, let, let me say this. Let me say this. As far as the RFID industry is concerned, I and a couple other CEOs in the industry a couple years ago started a pretty large cry for working with the privacy rights groups and making sure that all these things are addressed. Yeah. And I think we've done a pretty good job over the last two years of doing that. However, we need to distinguish our technology from the active RFID technology that Ms. Albrecht and others are worried right. about with this, with this being able to track people. Well, this is a passive device that does not track Tommy people. Thompson wants a system in every hospital now before he gets one in his arm. So if you were counting on him, <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's going to happen like this year. Well, actually, uh, obviously, Secretary Thompson, it's an honor to have him on our board of directors. 
And as he stated all along, when the infrastructure is in place, he will get a that chip. That could be 2050. Now, let, let me finish. Let me finish. We now have over 60 hospitals that have agreed to implement the system. So that time is nearing. Two now, right? And I spoke with Secretary Thompson yesterday, and we believe it's in the very near future that he will get a chip and then appear on your show to talk. All right. Excellent. All right. Him back when that all right. Happens. <laughs> Mr. Silverman, thanks for your time. Thank we really you very appreciate much. Your Thank you for having me. Uh, Scott Silverman, again, is the chairman and CEO of Applied Digital Solutions.